Netflix is amazing. Oh, thank you. This is your room. If you need anything, I'll be upstairs. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Miss. Please call me Vera. Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica, and welcome to the Fan Carpet. You, Una, how are you? How are you doing today? Very good. Enjoying the sunshine. Yeah. Great. Okay, so if we go back to the beginning, uh, was there a defining moment for you to get into the film industry? I've been brought up around filmmakers, uh, but I didn't want to. I don't think I didn't want to work in film um, until I realised in my um, later teens that it provided the perfect um, avenue to explore everything in life. Um, you know, not specialising in one thing. Every film you're on is a different story and a different experience in a different place. And so, I guess my first feature was a clap load on when I was 18 in LA and that's that's what introduced that kind of lifestyle to me. And how did you get involved with the film and what can you tell me about your your involvement in the production? Um, well just like any other film in the sense that uh, once you're on board you're you're trying to design it all, all the aspects of it and uh, work with the director um, to do that uh, but the host was a little bit different in that I was hired before the director and um, lots of things were in place. It was already cast. Uh, the locations were mainly quite restrictive because we had no money. It was um, three quarters of a million pound budget. Um, so we didn't have what you would normally have in, in the choice of lots of different um, locations or, or things like that. So um, my my re main reasons for taking it were because of um, Zach, Zach Workstein, the producer, because his mm -hmm. whole attitude was so refreshing. It wasn't like, this is a really low budget film, we've got to scrimp and save. It, he wanted it to be as big and as beautiful as it could be. And he didn't think about it in terms of dollars and cents in that regard. So for, for a cinematographer, that was just exactly the producer that you want to work with. Um, and then when he brought Andy, the director, on board, uh, it was more about working with Andy and trying to get inside his head to see how he was envisaging it um, um, or translating what I, he was telling me into, uh, in, into imagery and trying to work out how to um, um, shore up, contribute to the story with the images and, and the lighting. Okay, cool. Um yeah, um, uh, that that's got to be quite fascinating. So, I mean, it's like, a part. It's, it's the, the best part of the job, isn't it? Um, letting your rain, your imagination run wild, and um, yeah, and to, uh, to have essentially no limits either. Yeah, so well, can... there are always limits. Um, yeah. in the, the area depending on the project, and this project because it was very low budget. Um, um, was very limited, but um, um, no limits. Yes, and to, to what to what you can do. Yeah. Mm. Cool. All right. Um, do you have any pref uh, Do you have any preferred genres and any any favourite films? Um, well, this goes back to why I love film so much. Is that there's so much to explore in in the whole of history and your imagination and everything. So I don't think so. I think I probably lean towards uh, drama, um, comedy drama, especially or black comedy drama. Um, uh, I would love to do um, utopian or dystopian sci-fi's or action dramas as well. Uh, but I think I think I lean towards any any type of drama. Okay, cool. Um, um, are there any other aspects in the of the film industry that you'd like to be involved with? Uh, that you'd like uh, to you mean other jobs I might like to do? Yeah, the, uh, within the industry that you'd like to pursue, like um, I don't know, like producing or writing or or yeah. something like or anything like that. Yeah, I think I'd like to write, um, and probably would like to direct someday. But right now, I'm just in love with with shooting. But yeah. right, I think will probably be the first place I would go. Okay, great. Um, uh, like you have an you have an eclectic range of credits. Are there any genres that you haven't done yet that you'd like to? Oh well, the dystopian or utopian sci-fi's or or action dramas. Um, okay. Yeah, I'd love to shoot something like um, 
uh, Arrival or The Hunger Games or, you know, that they're, they're my kind of, they're not guilty pleasures. I just really love those kind of things too. Okay, brilliant. Um, and obviously with the, with the talent involved, you've worked with a, with a lot of great, great talent. Um, do you have a wish list of who you'd like to work with? Um, I think uh, Andrea Arnold, um, Graham Broadbent, uh Stephen Doldry uh there's so many Luke Besson I could I could just read lists off everybody on IMDB probably <laughs> anybody who's uh pushing boundaries or who um you know especially visual directors uh really the 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 secret is the story it's all in the story at the end of the day but the one concern I have is that um a lot of our scripts or things that are being made at the moment seem to be becoming more formulaic um, and and so I'd like to work with anyone that's that's got a fresh um, fresh vision so with, with the host what was it specifically that that like grabbed you when you first read when you first read the script uh, it wasn't a script I have to say it was um, Zach who was the producer Okay. Did it, and it was it was the the freedom and the trust that I've been given um, to work with the visuals, and um, so really I saw the host as an introduction to to Zach to working with Zach. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. Um, the, the uh, wonderful, sorry. The wonderful thing um, about uh, um, a thriller like that is that the the locations become characters in the, in the film. Um, and so that was a really nice thing to play with, with uh, Vera's house uh, being being a character in my mind, and um, and the fact that because Vera is almost schizophrenic, um, being able to play with the light like that. So so being able to play is is really important. Do you have any mem any memories from set that you that that you that will stay with you? Uh, all of them. <laughs> Uh, uh, not particularly, I'm afraid. Um, I, I do, I do. I mean, it was the, the the main house. Vera's main house was a really amazing place. We were so lucky to get it, and it had depth, such depth. I think it went, you know, sixty feet back. You could see in lots of the shots. Um, and I still see in the film times when I'm um, moving the camera in such a way to try to get um, sculptures in the background and things like that so um that was quite funny when i was looking looking behind the scene more than i was at the scene okay cool um uh like fandoms are are a big part of the industry as well um uh, is there any other than like films like the hunger games or dystopian thrillers uh who or what are you a fan of oh well, that's what i was saying about andrea arnold and um, things like fish tank um mm. Three uh, billboards right. uh, in Ebbing, Missouri. Um, local hero, um, uh, uh, Blade Runner. Um, yeah, there's, there's a couple of Icelandic films, like uh, Rams and um, Women at War, Woman at War, and uh, Never Look Away. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, yeah, all great films. Um, uh, so, with with uh, the popularity of streaming services like Netflix and Disney Plus and etc., uh, what do you think the future of cinema is? I, I kind of thought that we were seeing a bit of a resurgence in, in people going to the cinema, um, and I pray that so. I, I, if they could lower the cost to go to the cinema, I think we'd, we'd see more people going. So. I think that the experience of going out to the cinema is, is um, being appreciated anew because I think for a while people had gone to just um, streaming um, and then realise how much you miss when you're not in, in, the, in the, with the big screen in the dark. Um, it's that community yeah. aspect to it, isn't it? When you can, when you can, it's that community aspect when you can just be sitting there watching a film uh, with uh, like with like with, with um, a bunch of strangers or even a bunch of friends and you all have like different um, different reactions to what you're seeing. 
and and the ability to immerse yourself in the film so much better with with such great sound and and the big screen um completely um so i don't know i don't know what it's going to be in the future but i'm i pray i hope that uh it remains and what are you looking forward to uh when getting back to when you when, when you're getting back back to set what are you looking forward to you mean um about a specific job or you mean just about uh, well yeah i mean uh what what's coming up for you that you're looking forward to getting back to uh i've got a couple of jobs um one is a second unit on a massive um uh apple series uh okay. and then the next one is another independent film that i can't really talk about but that is you know in a great place so um i'm really looking forward just to getting back to work right cool um with um with, with like a, a series like apple cv um and the the and the independent film do you tackle them differently um like from from the cinematography point of view do you tackle them differently no no um, the job no um, i mean there are different challenges uh on different size jobs um but then there's, there's still very similar challenges and i mean the job any job that you're on just absorbs you completely it just takes over and um um that kind of level of concentration and, and um input is is demanded of you whatever the job is so no so yeah uh, yeah and the, i'm ju just always fascinated because like a lot of tv shows these days are being shot as though they are films so like on on netflix you've got things like the witcher uh, um uh, and like the on disney plus you've got like the mandalorian and they're essentially an elong a longer version of a film um and uh, they get getting shot more cinem cinem cinematically these days which is oh okay which I always find interesting. I, I think I misunderstood the first question. So, um, uh, my experience of shooting series is that that if they're if they're massive, then you've got more support and less page count maybe per day and stuff. But on something like say a BBC series or something like that, you'll be doing a crazy amount of pages per day. There's less um, flexibility in the schedule for things like the lighting or or, or for visuals. Um, because it's just about getting it in the can, um, so you you would you would have to be recreating things more um, for a series, I think. Whereas hopefully with a feature film, you could schedule and find right locations, shoot the right time of day because you can't beat that stuff. Um, so um, that that would be different. Um, but I mean, I've been in the business for a very long time. And um, I mean, Britain, we were always famous for our TV series as being high quality and treated as though they were films, because that's what you wanted is something that was really high quality. So if that's, um, and I guess it depends on the kind of series, the type of series that you're looking at. If you're looking at a series that's going to be streamed, then they, they want it to look high quality too, don't they? So, so hopefully we get that support. So I imagine the difference mainly is in the page counts and the, and the how tight the, the schedules are um yeah cool i would try to approach all of it um with the aim for the same level of quality great so um well, uh, what, what are you hoping that people take away from it once they get a chance to see it Uh, I don't know. I hope they they have a good time. <laughs> Great. Well, well, I did. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure John will too. Um, so he he, lo he loved it when he saw the trailer. So <laughs> before I sent him the sent him the link to the film. Um, thank you so much for your time. Um, good good luck with everything, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Take care. You Bye. too. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. You didn't choose your opponent wisely. Have a lovely stay.
on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.